Hey guys! So, I don't know if you can notice or tell, but we're in our truck here in Florida. So, uh, Brennan flew up to Nashville and drove it down, and yeah, we have it back. So, we're just going to kind of go in a little more detail um, how we got to this point and uh, what was actually wrong with it. So on December 30th, we left Illinois bright and early and had all intentions to make it down to Georgia um, and stay with family for a couple of nights because we couldn't get to the campground here in Florida until January 1st. So we were making pretty good time progress and we got outside of Nashville, um, literally the outside of Nashville, and the check engine light came on and Brennan went to um, accelerate a little bit and noticed uh, there was no power, like he couldn't move forward. So we safely got pulled over and sat on the side of the interstate for close to five and a half hours. Um, after we got pulled over, Brennan started to look to see if he could tell what was wrong. He was under the hood, looking under the truck. Um, doing some googling and then we finally got out the code reader and um, he got that plugged in and got a couple codes and he was hoping he could just reset it and that we could get to a safer spot to figure out what's going on but no there was nothing we could do so we sat there for five and a half hours waiting for the to tow so within that five and a half hours that we were there um, we first started off with trying to get um, a tow through um, State Farm as that's who we had our insurance through and we put in a roadside assistance claim thing and they came back saying they might not have anything until 6 o'clock that night and mind you this all started at 1 o'clock in the afternoon and so at that point he started to look for Ram dealers in the area uh, to see if they'd be able to take a look at our truck, maybe at that day, if not, you know, early next week. And unfortunately, you know, it was a holiday weekend, so some were closed, some weren't answering their phone. Um, he finally found a Ram dealer that answered the phone, told what was going on, and they said that they'd be able to look at it about mid, that midweek following that week, um, or that Saturday. And so at that point, we asked what to do because we've never needed a tow before and so they said to reach out to is it Stellantis yeah that's who owns Ram yeah so Stellantis um Rams warrant or what is it tow insurance tow, oh tow insurance because it's under warranty and, yeah because our this is a new we bought this truck new only 11,000 miles on it um when we uh when all this happened so um we or he started calling and so, of course, when we needed a tow, we needed a tow for the truck and the camper because we were pulling it or hauling it. Um, and when we called Stellantis, I think they were a little confused that we had a trailer um, that we also needed towed um, because anytime they would send out a tow request to any company in the area, um, it would get denied or rejected uh, because after about four or five hours, uh, we finally realized that Ram would only pay for the truck to be towed, not the camper to be towed. So the towing companies didn't want to have anything to do with it. So once we got that all figured out that Ram wasn't going to pay for the camper to be towed, we're like, forget it, we're just going to find our own tow. And we did. And uh, they came to us about an hour and a half after uh, we called them. So the truck was put up onto a tow truck and the uh, camper was pulled behind it. Kind of looked cool, but I don't want to ever do this again. I can tell you that. Um, I had to ride in a separate vehicle with the towing company. And the dogs had to ride in this truck on top of the tow truck, which made me real nervous. But we made it. And... Um, the towing company, they were nice enough to tow to the camp, tow us to the campground first. Um, they dropped off the camper for us, and then they are also very nice enough to uh, let us unload the bed of the truck. And of course, they had to uh, bring the truck off of the tow truck anyway because our dogs were in there. So they were nice enough to stick around for a little bit so we could unload everything. And then they took the truck to the dealership.
So after we got settled in that weekend at the campground, next step was figuring out what to do. How are we going to get to Florida? You know, just what are we going to do? And, you know, unfortunately, it was a holiday weekend. So everything was closed through Tuesday, basically. And so we were kind of uh, thinking about what we could do. Um, we could try to find, you know, rent a truck ourselves to haul the camper down. But with that, we have to return the truck where we got it, and we weren't, we can't do that. So that was out. Um, hiring someone to haul the camper down for us, that's expensive. Um, and then, did we think of anything else? No. No, not really. No. And then, between his grandparents and his parents, they were like, well, why don't you just, his grandparents were like, well, you can borrow our truck which was in Minnesota and his parents are in Minnesota and his parents are like, well, we could just bring grandpa's truck down and then get you down to Florida because his parents are actually already coming to Florida um, just like a week later. And so like we can bump up our vacation, bring the truck down, take you, you know, and at first we, we didn't want them to do that. Um, we just kind of thought it was too easy <laughs> for, <laughs> for what this haul was. Uh, but and we ended up, uh, they ended up coming down with the truck. And so we took a couple days to get here to Florida, but that is how we got the camper and ourselves to Florida. Well, his new job, he had to start on January 8th. So we really, we needed to get to Florida at some point before then. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how we got from Nashville to Florida. So what happened with our truck is the K1 clutch pack, the snap ring slipped out of the groove. So the clutch pack wasn't able to hold pressure anymore. So that's your first through fourth gears use K1 clutch pack. Uh, basically July through October built Rams with the HO Cummins in it have the potential to have this issue because they had a variance in the snap ring they were getting from their supplier and it was causing it to be just out of tolerance enough it couldn't hold all the force. Our truck was a December built truck, so it shouldn't have happened, but when you look at the transmission serial number, it had a, a transmission that had been on the shelf since September, so it was right in the heart of when they were having the most issues before the quality control caught on that the snap rings were undersized and started uh, you know, measuring every one before it got put into transmissions. Yeah. So it's something you don't don't think would happen. So far, Ram has been doing pretty good at taking care of stuff. Um, with as ex as expenses come up that were un you know uh, expected, like rentals and things. But yeah, hopefully they keep doing a good job. So yeah, we're happy to have the truck back finally. Uh, but yeah, we. We had to rent a couple of vehicles. We rented a truck from Nashville down to here. The um, reason why we got a truck is our truck is a 3500 and his grandpa's truck is a 2500 And not that we had the camper full of stuff, but we just wanted to lessen the load as much as we could. So we put some of the stuff in the bed of the F-150. Um, and then when we got down here, we had to rent another vehicle because we needed to return the truck. But, um, but yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. And so if you have any questions or comments about our fun adventure, uh, let us know below and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.